Good morning, church. Before we go into our short Sabbath school for this morning, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath day. We thank you for the rest that it brings and for the communion with you that it brings. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with us now. As we open your word, we ask that you give us wisdom. We ask that you give us understanding and we ask that you speak to us. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Revelation 18, verse 4. Let's read it together. It says, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. Again, it says, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. God always blesses the reading of his word. Amen. A happy Sabbath to you, friends, and thank you for joining us for this the Sabbath school. Uh, as we go into the Sabbath school, I'd like to, to highlight that this is a brief introduction into today's topic and that I encourage you to read for yourself. I encourage you to go back to Scripture for yourself, to study for yourself, and hopefully to be revived by God's Word. As we look at the world around us, I, I believe that now more than ever we need to be revived by God's Word. The world around us is a complete mess. We have had variant after variant of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic and wave after wave of illness. We've had lockdowns, looming potential lockdowns, changes in regulations, worrying about countries' travel bans and red lists, um, looking at petrol prices increasing and prices of uh, uh, the cost of living in general fluctuating. We've had a State of the Nations address which really told us that look, you on your own. And as I look at the world around us, I may be the only one who's feeling this way, but I feel like for today's sermon, I can simply take out my cell phone and ask you to do the same. I can scroll through a few news feeds, look at what's trending on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and then read our scripture reading for today and then simply sit down. I feel like there's not much more that I need to say except possibly to ask a simple question after reading our scripture reading. A simple question and that is why are we still in Babylon? Why are we still in Babylon? Now you may ask me what do you mean? How am I in Babylon? So I invite you to come with me as we go back to Biblical Babylon, as we spend time unpacking Babylon of the past, and then as we look at the similarities to present-day Babylon. So follow me as we track back to Babylon of the Old Testament. We actually see Babylon mentioned very early in biblical history. In Genesis chapter 10 and chapter 11, we see this with the story of the Tower of Babel. And then again in Genesis chapter 12, we see the geographical area feature where Abraham is called out of what is then called Ur of the Chaldees, or Chaldeans. But this area is actually the same area. So technically, Abraham is the first person to be called out of Babylon. But we see Babylon really coming to focus again in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, where Daniel and his friends, along with many other Israelites, are taken away from their homeland. They're taken away from Israel as captives to Babylon. And through the book of Daniel, we gain an image of some of the splendor of Babylon of biblical Babylon. And through Daniel's writings, we see how Daniel and his friends are taken captive. We see how them and, and other nobility are kept in the palace, how they are given Babylonian names, how they are taught Babylonian customs and culture. We read about King Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. We read about 
the, the different metals that it's made of. And then we find out about how these metals represent kingdoms. We even read about how Nebuchadnezzar himself looks across his kingdom and becomes proud of all that he has accomplished in Daniel chapter 4. You see, Babylon at the time was a superpower system. And I want you to take note of the wording that I'm using. Not a country, but a system. Babylon controlled the kingdoms and rulers of the then known world. The kingdoms and rulers who were in place in other places paid tribute to Babylon. The superpower system controlled most of the finances and politics of its time. Other parts of history speak about the city of Babylon as having paved streets, a city that was built on both sides of the river Euphrates, with large, massive walls that chariots could ride on. Babylon was also home to many false gods. In fact, the name Babylon means gate of the gods. And at the height of its power, when it seemed unlikely that Babylon could ever fall, Jeremiah gives a prophecy. He gives a warning about the fall of Babylon. A warning and a cry that sounds very similar to our scripture reading for today. And we can read about this throughout Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. And I encourage you to have a look at it. But for now, let's focus on Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. And listen to this. It says, flee from the midst of Babylon. Let everyone save his life. Be not cut off in a punishment. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. The repayment he is rendering her. Now like I said, at, at this time in biblical Babylon, it's at the height of its power, and it seemed impossible that anything could happen to Babylon. Yet this prophecy was given, and it's not given much attention at the time. You see, the captives of Babylon didn't pay attention to the prophecy because they'd become comfortable. They had everything they needed right there. They didn't need to go anywhere. And yet we know from Daniel chapter 5 that the Medes and Persians do overthrow Babylon. Yet at this point we see comfortable captives, happy in Babylon. But what does this have to do with us today? I want you to notice the similarities between Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 and Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6. Revelation, Revelation 18 verse 4 says, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6 says, Flee from the midst of Babylon. Let everyone save his life. Be not cut, be not cut off in a punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, the repayment he is rendering her. Now, could it be, friends, could it be that the call to physical Israel is also a call to us as spiritual Israel today? See, physical Babylon represented a system, a system that controlled the world at the time of biblical Israel. And spiritual Babylon represents a system, a power that controls the world we live in today. Physical Babylon was a place filled with many gods and blatant open sin. And spiritual Babylon represents today and presents us today with the option of many gods. Gods of self, gods of money and status and possessions. Spiritual Babylon is also a place that not only openly flaunts its sin, but goes so far as to celebrate, celebrate its sin openly. Both physical and spiritual Babylon are set for a sudden fall by the wrath of God. And there is a call to both physical and the, in both physical and spiritual Babylon for us 
to come out as well. Now while the children of Israel were in physical Babylon, they'd also become spiritually complacent. And we see some of this and we get a glimpse of it in Daniel chapter 3, where out of all the people in the province of Babylon who were called to bow to that golden image, there's only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Only these three Jewish boys are found to stand and refuse to bow. Now either these are the only three Jews in the entire province, or the other Israelites had become spiritually complacent. Have we today in spiritual Babylon become spiritually complacent? Knowing what we've just heard, seeing the parallels, the question is, why are we still in Babylon? What are we still doing in Babylon? Are we like the Israelites of biblical times, comfortable captives, happy to live on both sides of the fence. Great, great controversy. Um, the end of page 594 tells us, the multitudes do not want Bible truth because it interferes with the desires of the sinful, world-loving heart. And Satan supplies the deception which they love. Friends, we comfort or we, we fool ourselves and others into believing that we are not in Babylon because we are in the church. But when we are not in the church, friends, sadly, our talk sounds like Babylon. Our dress looks like Babylon. Our diet is one that represents that of Babylon. And our entire lifestyle mirrors and resembles Babylon and those who are living freely in Babylon. We want to come to church, friends, and we want to sing in a little while we're going home, but we are quite comfortable with this world as our home. Jesus looks to the leaders of his time in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, and he says something that points fingers at us, and he says, This people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me. Church, where's our heart? Be honest with yourself. Where is your heart? Friends, the good news is that God has a people in Babylon. Our scripture says, come out of her, my people. The great controversy continues. We, we, picked, we, we were on page 594 when we go just over to page 595. Ellen White continues the quote and she says, But God will have a people upon the earth to maintain the Bible and the Bible only as the standard of all doctrines and the basis of all reforms. Friends, are we that people? Are we living like that people? God has a people in Babylon. But he's calling those people out of Babylon. Yes, God has a people in Babylon, friends. But listen, he's calling those people out of Babylon. The question is, will you answer that call? Will you step out? of your comfort zone? Will you give up the comforts of Babylon to answer the call? It seems like Ellen White speaks directly to us today in Review and Herald, December 13, 19, uh, 1892. She says, God has called the children of Israel, as God has called the children of Israel out of Egypt, that they might keep his Sabbath. So he calls his people out of Babylon that they may not worship the beast or his image. And friends, before I go on with that quote, the world around us has fired warning shots, I'd like to say. Warning shots that should have woken us up. Warning shots that I believe should form part of that call to come out. 
She goes on and she says, After the truth has been proclaimed as a witness to all nations, every conceivable power of evil will be set in operation, and the minds will be confused with many voices, crying, Lo, here is Christ, lo, he is there. This is the truth, and I have a message from God. He has sent me with great light. She goes on and she says, Then there will be a moving of the landmarks and an attempt to tear down the pillars of our faith. A more decided effort will be made to exalt a false, the false Sabbath and to cast contempt upon God himself by supplanting the day he has blessed and sanctified. This false Sabbath is to be enforced by an oppressive law. Later on she says, but while Satan works with his lying wonders, the time will be fulfilled, foretold in Revelation. And a mighty angel that shall lighten the earth with his glory will proclaim the fall of Babylon and will call upon God's people to forsake her. Friends, if we follow the events of the world around us, these bleak events, and we read between the lines, we see this unfolding before our eyes. We see a time coming when this law will be passed. And like I said at the beginning, this is not meant to scare us. God has a people that he's calling out, and I believe that we are his people. And, and this is meant to encourage you to study for yourself to read for yourself and to find out for yourself what's going on around you. We are that people. And I believe that God is calling you and I today to come out of Babylon. Will you answer that call? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your Sabbath day. We thank you for a day where we can realign our lives with you. We thank you for a day where we can separate ourselves from the world. For a day where we can commune with you. Dear Lord, as we start our day with this message, we ask you to enlighten us. We ask you to be the after speaker. We ask you to direct our mind and our thoughts. To help us as we seek to understand more about your word and what it says for the times that we are living in. And dear Lord, as we do that, we ask that you show us our place in the times we are living in and what you expect of us to do. Be with us as we go through the further hours of the Sabbath. Of the Sabbath. Continue to speak to us and continue to bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.